Hello, good evening, welcome to St Mary's Halesworth. I'm reading Common Worship Daily Prayer, All Saints to Advent, Evening Prayer from the Church of England's Common Worship Provision. You'll find the words at the Church of England's website at Remus Daily Prayer, downloadable as app for Apple or Android device. You're welcome to join me in the building, 8 and 6, Tuesday to Saturday. As a rule, if you're coming any distance, just drop us a line in case on that particular occasion we're not here. Um, same times by Zoom, code on the Bly Church's website and Facebook page. We're live streaming on Facebook and the audio will appear on my Dominic Doble YouTube channel presently. I'm just I've got some rather dramatic lighting effect. I may have either the uh, lights aren't working in the Lady Chapel or I haven't uh, flicked the switch. But uh, if you're happy with that uh, dramatic look on Facebook in particular, um, then uh, stick with it. Those who are just listening, I'm afraid you don't get that uh, Think of that effect. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Your faithful servant bless you. They make known the glory of your kingdom. Blessed are you, sovereign God, our light and our salvation. To you be glory and praise forever. Now as darkness is falling, wash away our transgressions. Cleanse us by your refining fire and make us temples of your Holy Spirit. By the light of Christ, dispel the darkness of our hearts and make us ready to enter your kingdom where songs of praise forever sound. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The following Isaac Watts hymn. Give me the wings of faith to rise within the veil and see the saints above how great their joys, how bright their glories be. Once they were mourning here below and wet their couch with tears. They wrestled hard as we do now with sins and doubts and fears. I asked them whence their victory came. They with united breath ascribed their conquest to the Lamb, their triumph to his death. They marked the footsteps that he trod, his zeal inspired their breast, and following their incarnate God possessed the promised rest. Our glorious leader claims our praise for his own pattern given, while a long cloud of witnesses show the same path to heaven. That this evening may be holy, good and peaceful, let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. The Psalms point this evening, 98, 99 and 100, may be found at the back of the book. Psalms 98, 99 and 100. The Lord has made known his salvation. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvellous things. His own right hand and his holy arm have won for him the victory. The Lord has made known his salvation. His deliverance has he openly shown in the sight of the nations. He has remembered his mercy and faithfulness towards the house of Israel, and all the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Sound praises to the Lord, all the earth. Break into singing and make music. Make music to the Lord with the lyre, with the lyre and the voice of melody, with trumpets and the sound of the horn. Sound praises before the Lord the King. Let the sea thunder and all that fills it, the world and all that dwell upon it. Let the rivers clap their hands, let the hills ring out together before the Lord, for he comes to judge the earth. In righteousness shall he judge the world and the peoples with equity. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The Lord has made known his salvation. The Lord is King, let the peoples tremble. He is enthroned above the cherubim, let the earth shake. The Lord is great in Zion, and high above all peoples. Let them praise your name, which is great and awesome. The Lord our God is holy. Mighty King, who loves justice, you have established equity. You have executed justice and righteousness in Jacob. 
Exalt the Lord our God, bow down before his footstool, for he is holy. Moses and Aaron among his priests, and Samuel among those who call upon his name. They called upon the Lord, and he answered them. He spoke to them out of the pillar of cloud. They kept his testimonies unto the law that he gave them. You answered them, O Lord our God. You were a God who forgave them and pardoned them for their offences. Exalt the Lord our God and worship him upon his holy hill. For the Lord our God is holy. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. The Lord is gracious. His steadfast love is everlasting. May be joyful in the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. And his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. For the Lord is gracious, his steadfast love is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. The Lord is gracious, his steadfast love is everlasting. Scrolling past our first reading to the Song of God's Assembled, turning back our books to evening prayer, All Saints to Advent. We have come before the throne of God to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. We have come before God's holy mountain, to the heavenly Jerusalem, the city of the living God. We have come before countless angels making festival, before the assembly of the firstborn citizens of heaven. We have come before God who is judge of all, before the spirit of the just made perfect. We have come before Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant. We are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. So let us give thanks and offer to God acceptable worship, full of reverence and awe, for our God is a consuming fire. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. We have come before the throne of God to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. Isaiah chapter 1 from 21 is our first Bible reading. Isaiah is in the uh, prophecy section of the Hebrew Scriptures. Indeed, it opens that section. If you have a Bible with both covenants in it in front of you, without the Apocrypha, if you open about halfway through, you'll find the Psalms, the wisdom material, move towards the back, and after Song of Songs and Proverbs and the like, you'll find Isaiah. We're looking at the large number one in the margin, chapter number one, book of Isaiah. And within chapter one, we start to read at verse 21, the verse numbers are the small numbers in the text. How the faithful city has become a whore, she that was full of justice, righteousness lodged in her, but now murderous. Your silvers have become dross, your wine mixed with water, your princes are rebels and companions of thieves. Everyone loves a bribe and runs after gifts. They do not defend the orphan, and the widow's cause does not come before them. Therefore says the Sovereign, the Lord of hosts, the Mighty One of Israel, Ah, I will pour out my wrath on my enemies and avenge myself on my foes. I will turn my hand against you. I will smelt away your dross as with a lie and remove all your alloy, and I will restore your judges as at the first and your counsellors as at the beginning. Afterwards you shall be called the city of righteousness, the faithful city. Zion shall be redeemed by justice, and those in her who repent by righteousness, but rebels and sinners shall be destroyed together, and those who forsake the Lord shall be consumed. For you shall be ashamed of the oaks in which you, have, in which you delighted, and you shall blush for the gardens that you have chosen. For you shall be like an oak whose leaf withers, and like a garden without water. The strong shall become like tinder, and their work like a spark. They and their work shall burn together with no one to quench them. Harsh stuff from my eyes, the sort of thing you might expect um, from Amos and Micah, is it? But uh, challenging to read in the scriptures the word whore. At the very least, faithful city has become a whore. This is uh, an example of that uh, long-running uh, allegory, metaphor of God's relationship with us as spouse. The marriage covenant, God with God's people. And uh, God loves us despite our unfaithful, despite our unfaithfulness or our faithlessness. And so this is why the faithful city, like a faithful bride, has become a whore, full of justice. Now murderers live there instead of righteousness. And uh, the silver, that which is precious, the silver wine uh, to do with weddings, the, the ring, uh, the, the wine that was drunk by the uh, betrothed to signify that they accept the offer. Princes. The rebels, people run after bribe, do not defend the orphan widow. So there's nothing here, although that um, wine mixed with water stuff um, 
silver becoming dross could be a reference to uh, spirituality and worship. Um, the most obvious thing, given that it's not presented as a, an allegory, is they do not defend the orphan and everyone loves a bribe. So um, justice isn't being done. That's the important thing. So uh, just as sort of silver is of no value, whether it's worship, whether it's in business or commerce, um, God is going to turn God's hand against God's own people. Smelting away drosses with lye, this is going to be painful, it's going to be hot, it's going to be a crucible. However, the judges are going to be restored as at first. And afterwards, you shall be called a city of righteousness, the faithful city, again. But there's going to be this period of challenge. And so, um, rebels and sins will be destroyed. You'll be like an oak whose leaf withers. A strong will become like tinder. Their work will burn with them. And um, we might look at others and say they need to go through a restorative process. It might be hard. We're going to have to break that bone before we can reset it. Um, we might ourselves feel that we're going through a difficult time or that we want to get right and sort something out within our lives, knowing that it's going to be a difficult period. Well, I don't know if we're needing to diet or needing to uh, increase our exercise. It'll, be, it'll get worse before it gets better. And that's what's happening here in relation to a community under their God, looking at perhaps America, um, voting today to become the society they want to be. There'll be a period of potentially of change and transition. Whoever comes in, <clears throat> simply with our own country, might be looking to our new administration to bring about a change, which might be painful. People are talking about the radical budget, not radical enough for some, but for others, significant change in previous policy. Things are going to become more difficult before they settle and uh, get better. But the end result is justice and worship true worship so to matthew 2 from 1 to 15 then our next reading we scroll on to that matthew is the first gospel as presented it was deemed to be the first written but i think academics generally now realize that mark is the first it's shorter and anybody who tells a story tends to get embellished as others repeat it and uh, much of mark material is echoed in matthew and luke but not much of matthew and luke uh, is um you know, different there's not much in Mark that's different to those two, so that's probably the way it's come when John is unrelated almost entirely. They're called the synoptics, that's why, because many of the events appear in all three. So Matthew, at any rate, uh, thought of as being first because it's so Jewish, Hebrew in content, connects so closely in style with the Hebrew scriptures that go before. Gospel of Matthew, the Gospels open the second, the last third of the scriptures, the Greek or Christian material. So if you've got a Bible with both covenants in front of you, two thirds of the way through, opens with the Gospel of Matthew. We're looking at the number two in the margin, chapter number two, and we're reading from verse one, small number of verse one. Scroll onto it electronically. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we observed his star at his rising, and come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him, and calling together all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him in Bethlehem of Judah, for so it had been written by the prophet, I knew Bethlehem in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went to the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary's mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left their own country by another road. Now, after they had left, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Get up, take the child and his mother, and flee to Egypt, and remain there. And I tell you, for Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. Then Joseph got up, took the child and his mother by night, and went to Egypt and remained there until the death of Herod. This was to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet, Out of Egypt I have called my son. Just remarkable. 
Where is God born? In Palestine. It was called Syria then. It was a section of uh, the Roman peace uh, under Syria. That's why in, uh, elsewhere in the Gospel we have when Quirinius was, Quirinius was governor of Syria. We're in Bethlehem. Uh, we've got sorcerers, soothsayers, wise people um, from the east. So we've got uh, the same old, same old, east-west split, Iraq, Iran, Russia, America, east-west, different philosophies, different approaches, Turkey, um, Germany, Europe and America, just the same old, same old. These guys, however, turn up and say, we want to do homage. They were, um, they did used to turn up back in the day when there were um, potentially changes of authority, uh, new powers and authorities, new uh, political um, alliances. They just kind of popped up, a bit like the wise woman to bless a child, perhaps in our own cultures, or the matchmaker when the children were looking for a match, if you go to the uh, Fiddler on the Roof film. It was that sort of character, they just popped up. We don't really have them perhaps these days, unless you look at hacks or journalists in a similar light. But they turned up, and that lets us know that something significant, and they are following a star, they're signs of the times. But Herod, who is a puppet ruler, any echoes of uh, Netanyahu, probably not necessarily meant then, but I think we're entirely justified in reading, reading them in. Today we have the Christian colonies, West America and uh, United Kingdom, Northern Ireland, engaged, involved in arming, uh, providing information, uh, protecting uh, Netanyahu, who is concerned... Herod is concerned that there is power in these people. There is something that is destabilising his privileged position. And uh, Herod destroys the children. And uh, internally displaced in the first instance, and then an externally displaced refugee. God, this family, Scarpa, not Jordan, as many Palestinians did, the Intifada, whatever it was called, the uprising, when uh, Israel extended its uh, mandated area given to it under the Balfour Treaty by uh, United Kingdom, Northern Ireland, or Great Britain, or whatever it was then. Six day war extended its territory beyond its borders. The UN has never managed to get it to go back to its previous land offer with the British protectorate, including Jerusalem to the sea. That little slip of land worth looking at these maps. Just exactly the same thing again and again, those poor people. But throughout history, up until the current time, the different ethnicities and uh, religions seem to have ever managed to live alongside each other. Quite why that's been ramped up now, who knows? But um, gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Allusions to the temple, allusions to Jesus being the new temple in this body. Uh, allusion perhaps to what Jesus is going to achieve in his life. All and each of these are correct and worth noting as uh, echoes and ripples of other texts, scriptures, traditions in our reading. And uh, so if you are struggling in political mess, in uh, mess at home or at work with different people telling lies and half-truths and not getting you injustice and stuff just isn't happening here we have god just dumped in this situation here um, just as god is involved with uh, arab christians jewish ethnic background in fact jewish religious background people there today who are full of god just as the muslims are just as the non-jesus believing jews and atheistic jews uh, who are righteous, you know, those for whom God is engaged, those with whom God is pleased. Look at our first reading today. The needs of the orphan and the, the uh, widow are overlooked. God is cross with that. But those who are righteous, God is supportive of them, sees and hears these tears and keeps them in a bottle. If that's you, either out there or you're concerned or worried about it, and the powerlessness that all those demonstrations, majority of people around the world can't bear what's going on, but uh one or two politicians with power, feathering their own nest, turning a blind eye. I only hope the, United, the International Court of uh, 
but where it is um, brings them to justice. So to the responsory back in evening prayer, uh, all saints to Advent. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel, and afterwards receive me with glory. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel, and afterwards receive me with glory. For I am always with you, you hold me by my right hand, and afterwards receive me with glory. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel, and afterwards receive me with glory. The Song of Mary. The righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. My soul claims the great of the Lord, my spirit rejoices in God, my saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. In this day, all generations that will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him, from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm, and has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones, and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel, to remember his promise of mercy. The promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. <clears throat> Father, Son, Spirit, three in one, one in three. We come to you at the end of the day and we look back at those things that have brought us low, concerns about the Middle East perhaps, um, waiting for an invitation to an interview, waiting for an invitation to a pre-operation um, clinic, waiting for exam results, waiting for good news, somebody we proposed to you, waiting to tell us yes or no. And it hasn't happened, we've been let down. We might have submitted to our addictions, our baser instincts led ourselves and you down. If that's been our experience today, we come to you praying for your healing, your restoration, your forgiveness, recognising our humility and the vulnerability, culpability. We come to you also at the end of the day, however, it might have been one of victory and triumph and progress in one way or another. We might have had good news about being um, offered to join a committee, accepted, giving us hope and worth. We might have received money from a loved one or from a competition we were engaged with or a prize or recognition for a book written. And so we feel uplifted and supported and honoured, encouraged, valued. And if that's been our experience, we give you thanks for those gifts you've given us and for your valuing of us by our community in our own selves. With Release International, we pray for Kazakhstan. The testimony of Pastor Amir includes deportation, arrest and opposition. We thank God that he has not given up, but is still actively preaching the gospel and making disciples. Turning to Christian Aid's uh, website, uh, they have updated. We are now, are now in uh, November. So uh, scrolling through to the 5th, as uh, fireworks go off around us. We pray that civilians in war zones will be protected and treated in accordance with international new law echoing my prayers earlier, which just seem quite radical to me when I say them, but thank God there's an organisation which says the same. International respect to Church of England, prayers for the Holy Land. God of compassion and justice, we cry out to you for all who suffer in the Holy Land today. For your precious children, Israelis and Palestinians, traumatised in the fear of their lives. For the families of the bereaved, for those who have seen images they will never forget. For those anxiously waiting for news, despairing with each passing day. Pray to you for those in the nations around who will also experience the hostility of the United Kingdom and uh, America um, by proxy. Joint Public Issue Team Prayer for Ukraine. God of all with alarm and concern, we bring before you the military intervention in Ukraine in a world made for peace and flourishing with immense use of armed force. Suffolk Diocese, we pray for our Bishop uh, Martin as he steps down, giving thanks for the um, enthronement of Bishop Mike, our suffragan before, now in Exeter. Pray your blessing on his uh, nascent ministry there. Uh, may you establish relations his relationship with you in the first instance, with himself, his wife and family, and with those whom he serves to your honour and glory. Pray for Bishop Mike, uh, Martin as he moves towards retirement and for our, um, the committee uh, deciding on his replacement. May they all successor. Uh, may they be supportive of parochial ministry and the traditional church, expression of church in this place. 
uh, that they will see that as being the foundation, uh, bedrock and soil for any fresh expressions. I'm not being a huge fan of Bishop's Mission Orders myself. Um, and uh, traditional calling, selection, training of the clergy at uh, those traditional hierarchies might be uh, strengthened, uh, notwithstanding the value and worth that uh, local electricity pathway people have brought. Uh, maybe those bounds need to be uh, reasserted so that all know what they're what would be expected of them as uh, expectations are managed looking ahead and that we will as a county draw down greater funding and support and uh, easing of uh, progress or jobs and tasks we need to put in place to maintain promote manage our buildings and maintain stipendiary numbers we pray with the diocese also for stefan who is lead clergy person in the benefit of Stoke with by Nayland and Lave and Heath with Polstead and Nayland with Whissington and Derek, who is a leader working with him. We pray for the other ministers uh, lay and ordained in that place. Also, ward treasurer and secretaries as uh, they seek to serve and support what you are up to and about in that place. Uh, we pray they'll be blessed as they see you working through them. We pray for primary schools in that deanery, Elmset, St Mary's Hadley. Hintlesham and Chattisham, Chattisham, Kersey and Watfield. We pray that those uh, Christian communities, those churches in their own right, mixed uh, age, uh, worshipping, praying, effective, effectual, um, whichever those are the correct grammatical word, uh, for their engagement and uh, mission, ministry in those places. Pray for healing, restoration within families, care, growth in faith and personhood. If we're all engaged with and receiving a blessing through those institutions, we pray for presidential elections in the US. The calm will prevail, whatever the results. That uh, it says the result will be accepted by both sides. Politics between Democrats and Republicans will continue. Pray that it will be beneficial to. Uh, the world, whatever the outcome. Pray for the people and businesses associated with the addresses in and around Halesworth of Walpole Road, Bramfield Road, London Road, Wissett Road, Norwich Road, Key Street and Holton Road. Those whom life is not going so well, may they know your justice and support and uh, that of the church and other organisations and agencies that they might be restored to flourishing. Where things are going well for people, may they be part of the answer and not part of the problem. And may they turn to you, to us, to their neighbours, to other organisations, to be supportive, offering their time, talents and abilities. Pray for uh, organisations, businesses based in or serving those addresses that they too will thrive and prosper, being able to continue to offer their aims and objectives and fulfilment of what they set out, their uh, foundation, um, whether they're business, whether they're voluntary, uh, local authority, whatever, that they may uh, continue to promote and uphold their part, play their part within our economy. Pray for Jean, Veronica, Claire, John, David, Felicity, Francis, Molly, Anne, Val, Brian, Joan, Ginny, Paul, Carol, Pam, Vera, John, Cynthia, Kim, Irene, Jude and Paula. I'm just deleting Vera as I go, as I just read that out, kind of on autopilot, but uh, I just covered today that Vera has died. So I'm just shifting through to the next group of people whom we will pray, but we pray God's blessing on these whom we have just prayed for, those in need, that they will know your presence, those who walk with them will have the support that they need in their turn. We pray that you will act in sovereign grace, bring about restoration and or indeed a good death, a good end that is marked by passage towards and then through and beyond in prayer, in hope, in worship, in those procedures and uh, jobs and tasks that need to be done before, during, after, whatever, whether this is a restoration, whether it is an ending in relationship, in life, in building, in work. We pray that you'll be their rod and staff. Your, your cross, that piece of wood which has unlocked hope, will uh, enable them to walk without stumbling and to protect themselves from falsehood and uh, deceit whilst they work through their emotional reaction response to the challenges that they face. 
We thank you for all who's given lives of Valerie, Berylyn, Peter, Brian, Audrey, Joan, Ben, Jeff, Vera. And I'm just going to include actually also Sue, who I uh, interred the ashes of today. I'm not quite sure why she isn't in that list. But we thank you for what's good in her life. And in all the lives of those who've died suddenly and unprepared through sickness, violence, and accident, those taking their own lives. Pray for those we've known and loved and seen no longer, those who so do faithfully hear in all his years, mind for at this time. Rest and grant unto them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them, and they rest in peace and rise in glory. Pray for ourselves and all who mourn the loss of loved and Lord, change in life chances. We pray that we'll hear your inspired word, spoken, spoken through your incarnate mouth, by the breath of your spirit. We pray in Jesus' name, in unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Almighty God, you have knitted together your elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Give us grace so to follow your blessed saints in all virtues and godly living, that you may come to those inexpressible joys you have prepared for those who truly love you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Unite our prayers with the whole company of heaven as our Saviour taught us. So we pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but to deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May Christ, who has opened the kingdom of heaven, bring us to reign with him in glory. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Goodbye to those joining us on YouTube.